another my day here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic and this time we're talking about factoring trinomials with this format ax squared plus bx plus c. So get let's get on with it. So first example here is 9x squared plus 9x plus 2. So when we are factoring trinomials all we have to do is to look at the format if our format on your a here take note this is our a this is our b and this is our c according to the format of your trinomial so we have ax squared plus bx plus c now if your a here is not equal to one so that means to say we cannot make use of the usual factoring in which I have a video on that one as well, so you kindly check on that one. I'll be placing that one under the description so that you will be getting used to how to factor out trinomials. Now, let's get our work done with this one. So if we don't have that a value equal to one, so that means to say we need to follow certain um, steps in factoring, and this is what we call as, the method here is what we call or what I call as sliding method. Sorry in that one. So sliding method literally we're just sliding it off, sliding a number onto the other term. So what number are we sliding off? So we will be sliding off nine to our constant term. So that's our C. And once we have slided off, we are just simply multiplying that nine there to our constant. So that means to say, this will now be x squared plus nine x plus 18 because we're multiplying what we slide off to our constant. So I hope that's clear everyone. Now next is, if you try to look at that one, we have now a trinomial with the format of a, which is equal to one. So that means to say, we can make use or utilize the usual factoring method on trinomials. So kindly do check that video before continuing with this one, because we need that concept. Now, in order for us to factor it out, we have to look at the constant and consider the sign of the constant. This is positive 18. So that means to say we will be looking for the possible factors in which we will be multiplying that would result to positive 18. But we need to consider so that our possible factors will be cut down into fewer factors possible. We are to consider the middle sign or the middle term sign. So this time we're having it as positive. That's a plus because we're talking about signs, so that's a plus. So that means to say, the factors that we're looking for are both positive. So we will not be considering the both negative. I hope that's clear. So let's now start with having it with one. Your 18 is divisible by one, any number is divisible by one, so we will have on the first trial as one and 18. But if you do know right away the factors in there then go ahead and skip this process so next we go for adding the factors that we look for and then check whether that result is in the middle term so checking if that is our b but looking at that one our b is 9 it's not 19 so this is not the possible factors next we go to the next one so we go for the next number on your one which is 2 checking whether 18 is divisible by 2. 18 is indeed divisible by 2 because any even numbers are divisible by 2. So we have 18 divided by 2, that is equal to 9. So we're adding 2 and 9. This is now equal to 11. But looking at your B, this is not the number on it. Next, we go to the next number. Next number is 3. And checking whether 18 is divisible by 3. 18 is indeed divisible by 3 because once you've added each of the digit on 18, the 1 and 8, that is equal to 9. 9 is part of the multiples of 3. We have 3, 6, 9. That means to say 18 here is really divisible by 3. 
because the sum of your digits of the number when that is divisible by 3 automatic that number there is divisible by 3 so this is indeed divisible by 3 and the the partner of 3 is 6 so we have 3 plus 6 that is equal to 9 looking at the middle term that is indeed 9 so this is what we are going to make use as your factor in so how to make use let's try to um, draw first the parentheses and then we have to put here on the parentheses our 3 and 6 and bringing with them their sign. So we have positive 3 and then we have positive 6. And then looking up, we have x squared here. So we get the root of that one that is x and also another x. So we have these factors. But this is not yet the final factors because... As you try to recall, we've slide off a number which is multiplied to your C. So similarly, we are going to put that number back on the factors. How do, we how do we put it back? We just have to divide your numbers on each of the factors there. So we're literally dividing this one by the number that we've slide off a while ago. We've slide off the number 9, so that is the exact number that you're going to divide each of the numbers on the factors. We do not include x there because, as you recall, we did not touch x. What we are only sliding is the numbers, so we just have to divide the number, right? Now, we also do the same thing on the other factors, so we have 9 as well there, and then we're reducing. Now, reducing this one... We can simply copy our x and then plus. Reducing 3 and 9, we have common numbers at, at the top and at the bottom part, which is 3. So we're literally dividing each of the numbers at the top and bottom by 3. So 3 divided by 3, that's 1. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. So we've got 1 third for the first factor. Next, we go for the second. So we just simply copy this one. And 6 and 9, still common factor or common number is 3. So we have to get that off. So we simply divide 6 and 9 by 3. So 6 divided by 3, that's 3. That's 2. Sorry. And then 9 divided by 3, that is equal to 3. So we've got 2 thirds on the second factor. Now, in the event that you have there the number in which you try to divide your number that you slide off will give off a non-whole number, meaning it's in the form of a fraction, then this is what you are going to do. You are to slide it back to your original place. What do I mean by that? If you try to recall, on the beginning, we have slide off from our first term, the number 9 towards our constant. This is literally what we are going to do. We are to slide off, but this time we are going to slide it off back. But what we are sliding only is not the entire one-third, but it's the denominator. So we slide it off this one to your first term. So that means this is now 3x plus 1. Now, in the event that this one here, this part here is already a whole number, then that will be your final factor. I hope that's clear, everyone. Now, next, we go to the other one. Since this is not a whole number, this is in terms of fraction, then all we have to do is to get this denominator out from there and move it back to the first term. So this is now 3x plus 2. That is your factor. Now, let's try to check it out. Say you might be doubtful about the process and so with the answers, let's try checking that out. Now, how to check? We just have to multiply your factors, 3x plus 1 and 3x plus 2. You can make use of your long process in multiplication. You can make use of your FOIL or the box method. So. Either way, that's really fine. So we can just do the FOIL method. 
first and the first term on the other factor. So 3x times 3x, that will be 9x squared. Next, we go for the outer. Outer is 3x on the first factor and then 2 on the other factor. So 3x times 2, that's 6x. So we're having a plus in there because they aren't positive. Next, we go for the inner. Inner here is 1 and inner here is 3x. So we have 3x for that. And then we have last term. So we have 1 and 2. So that is 2. So combining this two here, we have 9x squared plus 9x plus 2. And that is our original given. So that means to say that this is the correct factor. Now let's have a we have here another problem. This time we have our first term as negative. So what are we going to do in order to factor this out? So all we have to do is to do the same thing. We are to slide this off, the entire thing. So sliding that off there. So we have it as x squared minus x. And that will be minus 12. And then we go for looking for the factors of negative 12. So this is negative and we have our um, sign in the middle as minus. That means to say we're looking for factors in which the bigger one is negative. Because when we say negative 12, we are expecting that our factors is negative and the other one is positive. So to simply break down the possibilities, we have to consider the middle sign, which is minus. So that means to say we have a bigger number that has a negative on there. So starting off, we have 1 and then 12. The bigger one is 12 here, so this gets the negative sign. So adding that up, this is equal to negative 11. That is not what we're looking for. Next, we go for um, 2 and 6. So again, this is the bigger number, so this gets the negative, so we're adding. This is now equal to negative 4. And then we have 3 and 4. This is the bigger number, so this gets your negative sign. And we're adding this is equal to negative 1. So this is what we're looking for. Now we are going to write the factors for this trinomial here. So we have positive 3 and a negative 4. And then, of course, we have x squared getting the root of that one. That's x and another x. Now, we go for putting back the one that we slide. So we have negative 2 for that one. And this one also is negative 2 or gets negative 2. So we cannot simplify this one. So we have to put the negative 2 beside your x. So that is negative 2x plus 3. And then this one, we can still reduce that one. We have x, negative 4 divided by negative 2. That's positive 2. So this will be our factors. So checking so that we've got the correct factors there. So we check by simply multiplying these two factors by using our foreign method or any method. So we start off with our first term. So we have negative 2x and x there. We have negative 2x squared. Next, we go for the outer, negative 2x and 2. This is negative 4x. Next, we go for the inner. We have 3 and x. That will be plus 3x. Next, we go for the last one, so this is 3 and 2, and that will be positive 6. So combining this is negative 2x squared, and this is negative x plus 6. So that is our original expression. So that means to say that this is our correct factor. All right? So that is it. So I hope you were able to learn something, and I hope that works fine with you, the entire process of sliding method. And please do not forget to like, 
share, subscribe, and hit on the notification bell so that you can be updated on my latest videos. That's it. Thank you for watching.